Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This is the layout update for March 2015. I got some new stuff to show you guys, as well as some progress I've been making on my uh, scratch building the frac sand industry for my Fremo module. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, what this Athern Bethgon 5 pack. It's from the uh, ready to run line. Comes in a five pack like this, coal load included, and that's the uh, Canadian National Bethcon Coal Porter, five road numbers. You can see how uh, reflective they are. You can they're very very shiny, which is kind of cool. They track pretty nicely. I had a problem with one of the trucks on one of them, but. Uh, I was able to just ream it and then it worked fine. So there you can see separately applied grab irons and nice crisp uh, printing on the back there. To start, I wanted to put together a, a modern C CN coal train like with the ro aluminum rotary tubs like this. So this is kind of the start of it. I thought I'd get one of these Athern ready to run packs. And then Intermountain's planning on releasing a whole new set of like illuminators and uh, aeroflow gondolas so I thought these would uh, fit in there nicely with those the coal loads are actually pretty nice too I don't mind them sometimes these plastic ones are uh, not the nicest but they, they look pretty good actually it's a little bit better view you can see it's got the reflective markings on it nice car by uh, Athern ready to run I'm gonna roll them by here with some light on them so we can have a good look at the detail All right, guys. So that's one thing I got in over the last month. So another thing I got in was an, another one of these uh, Athern Ready to Run SD60s. This one in uh, CP paint. So add this to the uh, project list of putting in a decoder and uh, doing ditch lights on it. But fairly nicely detailed model, just like the CN one. Yeah, details great on it. You got MU hoses, a train line, a firecracker antenna on the roof. They're nice and heavy too, so it should be a good runner. Uh, just got to put a decoder in it and put some dish lights up on the front. One thing uh, I noticed is the, the nose is kind of sloped in the front, kind of like all Athern SD60s and 70s are. And I th I'm pretty sure it should be like straight horizontal, but uh, that's something I think I can fix. So that'll be a upcoming project. I'm not sure when I'll get to that, but there's a little bit better view of the front pilot detail in the cab. So that's the new stuff I got in over the last month. Let's uh, pop into my office and take a look at the progress I'm making, slow progress I should say, on my frac sand and loading terminal. So this is where I'm at guys. I'm continuing to uh, work on just getting the basic shapes of the bins for the second row. And this, this one especially is quite hard to make. I'll show you why in a second. These other ones weren't too bad. Um, they're just one inch uh, PVC conduit that I just cut on my miter saw 
and then I just used uh, styrene to make the tops for them. Here's another view uh, with uh, some of the completed bins. So I still have three more to make. The large rectangle one that's going to go on the back, like that. And you can see since I finished this one, I went and put the hopper bottom on underneath. That was part of the uh, Walther's kit that I stole from. So it actually is starting to, it's cool when you see it come together a little bit. And I'm just using that dumpster truck just for uh, height reference, but you can kind of see what it's going to look like when uh, when the semis drive through there to get loaded. I'll show you a couple of pictures of what I'm trying to uh, to capture with these. So if you look, see there, I got the pieces cut for the uh, large rectangle bin, which will go something like that. It's really slow going, uh, especially when you have to make bins from from scratch, basically uh, just using, this is Plastruck siding, this stuff. And uh, my original idea was like I just put 45 degree bevels on these and then just kind of stick them together, but as I found, they're way too flimsy. You'd never get a straight, a nice perfect straight edged and it wouldn't look like a bin if it had any kind of curves to it or not. So they're quite quite a difficult uh, shape to make. What I ended up doing was going to uh, Michael's, getting some of this floral, floral foam it's called, and uh, cutting that to, to the perfect length and width and diameter of everything I needed and then using silicone to glue this basically right onto the onto the floral foam then you have a nice straight edge and it makes the bin you know appear with 90 degree corners and everything make it actually look like a like the prototype so that's quite was quite a hard bin to build and it took me a couple tries actually originally I was going to use wood so I made this wooden bit which would have been the the inside and I was going to glue my plastic siding to the side of that but I realized this thing has got some weight to it I was just using scraps out of my garage you can see it wasn't a 2x4 wasn't wide enough so I added some just some scrap uh, 1 8 hardboard to it to make it the, the correct dimensions but this turned out to be too, way too heavy I was like hey I can't have this because it's gonna be you know this plus the rectangle bin plus the PVC which is is fairly heavy on its own it's going to be too much for my little plastic uh, framework underneath. So I had to find a different alternative, something that I could cut and make the shape I need. And this floral foam uh, turned out to be really, really, really useful. And uh, it was actually easy to do once I got it. Cuts really nicely on the miter saw and the table saw. So it was easy to uh, create the shape I needed. And then the next hardest thing was doing the, uh, the 45 degree bevels for the bin. This is something that's really hard to do. So and for this shape you need you actually have to do it eight times because each piece has two 45 degree bevels. So there's not much room to, for error and if if one is even off by a couple millimeters you end up with a huge gap. So we'll go to the garage and I'll show you how I was able to overcome that. There's a few chunks of the uh, leftover floral foam that I used for the core of the first building or the, sorry the first bin. And it, it's uh, super lightweight. I'm gonna, I probably will be using this a lot in the future for uh, other buildings. Anything where you need something, you know, like you can't just build a frame for it, especially with that flimsy siding. Here you can see with the floral foam how thin you can actually cut that. And I, that was a, just an end I cut off with my table saw, but it's pretty amazing that you can uh, just easily cut shapes like this. And it hold it retains its uh, it's quite quite rigid too like it's not like spongy so good stuff it's kind of a neat material and for a couple bucks from Michaels it's a really good option so then to make those to sand those 45 degree bevels on there I needed a jig because 
you saw how flimsy the plaster exciting is. So all I did was uh, I took a two, chunk of two by four and uh, cut it to the exact length of the bin I needed, you know, from here to here. That's the height of the bin. Cut it at a 45 and kept the piece that I cut off. And all, what it, all I do is uh, take the piece of plastruct, set it on here so that it's flush with the bottom, take the scrap piece, clamp it on, and then I just used uh, masking tape to just hold it. So then once I had the uh, plastic siding all ready to go and taped into the jig, it was just a matter of uh, holding it flat on the table and then just sanding it just like that, keeping it at 90 degrees to the belt and it actually worked really good. Um, I think the maybe half a millimeter off on one of them I think, which is pretty good for, for having to do this eight times. It took me probably a week just to do the one uh, bin by the time I figured it out and you know messed up a bunch of sheets of plastic and made that stupid wooden core insert. But uh, now I think I could do it a lot faster. So that wraps up uh, everything I've been working on over the last month. Basically just kind of doing a little bit here and there on my module. I do want to keep working on that till I get it done because it's taking up a huge amount of space on my work desk. So I think now that I know how to make these core inserts for the buildings and use that floral foam and use the sander to make 45 degree bevels on that siding, it will go a lot faster. So. As always, thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.